Hi everyone, this is Noelle Pack and I'm here with Dina Reed from the Extension Office and we wanted to give you all an update on tagging your livestock animals this year for the county fair and for district shows and anywhere else you might exhibit your livestock. So we wanted to make sure we gave you an update because the tagging information has changed for this upcoming year. So for those of you that are new or perhaps haven't done this process before, um, we're going to walk you through the steps of how to um, get a KUIP tag for your um, show animal this year. And this is just for market animals. Um, it does not include breeding livestock animals. Um, there's a separate process for that that we will cover later in this presentation. But KUIP is our Kentucky Uniformed Identification Program. Um, and it is mandatory for state fair, KDA sanctioned shows, and our county fair. So this year, the process for ordering KUIP tags is it's all going to be run through the county and we're gonna, it's a group order only. So all of the tag orders will be um, processed by the Kentucky State Fair. No individual or family will be allowed to order tags. Orders must only be placed by the county agent and or FFA advisor. And we're gonna talk about our process for the county specifically for this year. Uh, Meade County 4-H and FFA, we will be placing only one order for market beef and one order for sheep, swine, and lambs. All the deadlines should be observed to allow tagging information and DNA samples to be submitted by the state deadlines. The deadlines were set by the state. They are set in stone. These are not our deadlines, but deadlines that we have to abide by. So the process of this includes the dispersal of county tagging kits. Um, so the way that we are going to do this, tags have to be paid for before we can order them. So in order for that to happen, we need um, an exhibitor and or their parent or a representative um, to come by the office to order tags in person and to make payment. Um, because of uh, just some potential turnover time, payment is expected at the time for all tags. And then in the event that some tags go unused, uh, the exhibitor will be uh, reimbursed for those tags once they are turned back in. Uh, unfortunately, we will not have the tagging kits at the time that you order them uh, because we have to order them from the state fair. So once you place your order and then we receive those county tagging kits back from the state fair, then we will um, give you a call to come and pick up your tagging kits and then from there, you will follow the instructions in the tagging kit to complete the DNA kit uh, to tag your animal. And then you will have to submit your online validation form and information using the QR code that will be included in that county tagging kit. Uh, your completed DNA kits and any unused tags will need to be returned to the extension office so that we can process those and return them to the Kentucky State Fair office. And again, this is a, a state rule that um, we just have to comply with. Any unused tags must be returned to Kentucky State Fair and the exhibitor will be reimbursed the cost for any unused tags. This year for the collection of DNA to submit to the State Fair, um, you are responsible for making sure you've collected DNA on all of your market animals uh, and that they're returned to the extension office by the applicable deadline so that we can return them to the state fair by their deadline. So all DNA samples will be brought to the extension office and then from there they will be sent to the state fair. As far as the completion of the validation form, um, county extension agents and FFA advisors are responsible for making sure that the market animal validation form for all exhibitors are completed and submitted by the applicable deadline. 4-H agents and FFA advisors will also collect tag order fees and submit to the Kentucky State Fair so that there's only one check per county. Again, will be when you order your tags, you will be paying your money here at the extension office. Uh, another step uh, that Noel and I have responsibility for is verifying that 4-H members have received their six hours of education or that the um, FFA member is in good standing. So we will do that like we normally have, just tracking 
when you are attending meetings and or clinics. If you have a question about the number of hours that you have currently, you can always call our office and speak with Sue Ellen. She keeps that a very good record of that. Um, and then the, this will be verified after all of the um, tags have been returned to state fair. So Noelle and I will receive a spreadsheet from the um, state fair with all of our tagging, um, our exhibitors tagging information so that we can then go back and verify the six hours and member in good standing process. There will be no late orders or submissions this year. So some deadlines that you really have to abide by. Uh, starting on January 25th, 2022, the market cattle tag order form will open. So this will only be for our market beef. You'll need to stop by the extension office to order and pay for any kits that you may need. So this will be a kit for each animal that you're wishing to tag. This needs to happen by February 8th. Uh, that way we can make sure we've ordered enough kits and we get those back to you in a timely fashion. We will notify the exhibitors when the ta tagging kits, tagging kits, I'm sorry, are available for pickup. So uh, someone will be contacting you when those are ready. Uh, all validation forms for market beef have to be submitted online by 11.59 p.m. on March 18th. This is a a deadline that's um, a state deadline that we must abide by. There will be a QR code in each of the kits that you receive. You'll use that QR code to access that validation form. And then all the DNA envelopes for each animal must be turned into the extension office by March 14th. Uh, we do have deadlines um, separate for the market sheep, goat, and hogs, so our small animal tag forms. Um, that process will start April the 1st. Uh, the process will be the same, just dates will be different. Um, once you uh, stop by the office and order your kits, and we are asking that you do that by April the 15th. Uh, kits are $5 per kit, so that's $5 per animal that you are tagging. Once we place our, our uh, county, our total county uh, kit order, once we receive those, then those that have at, uh, ordered tags, kits, I'm sorry, ordered tagging kits will um, contact you to let you know that those kits are available for pickup. Uh, once again, it is the responsibility of the exhibitor to use that QR form, QR code that is included in the county tagging kits to submit your validation form. And for small animals, the deadline to submit that validation form is May the 20th, 2022. And then uh, all of the DNA envelopes must be in hand here at the extension office by May the 16th. So that way uh, the process is the same for all species. It's just different deadlines and when we have access to those ordering forms. So again, here's the information for market cattle, which is uh, active right now. And we'll go through February the 8th and then market sheep, goat, and hog will start on April the 1st. And we will send reminders about this to our small animal um, members closer to that deadline. And like Noelle said earlier, uh, these we're, we've aligned our deadlines so that we can get things processed and turned back into the state by their state deadlines. And we've been told that no late orders or submissions will be allowed. So please be very cognizant of these deadlines so that someone doesn't miss out on being able to tag their animal this season. As far as our breeding animal nominations, uh, breeding animals are not required to have a KUIP tag to show in any breeding animal show. Um, so the process for these animals is different. Uh, any animal that will be shown in a breeding show must have submitted a breeding animal nomination form by the appropriate deadline. So there is a different form to be filled out instead of that validation form we were talking about earlier for market animals. Uh, animals can be shown two ways during the summer, um, but they there must there must be a breeding nomination form submitted. Um, this is an electronic submission with a set deadline. So just make sure you uh, pay attention to that deadline closely if you're gonna be exhibiting breeding animals. Um, county Extension Agents and FFA Advisors will be coordinating the following. We'll collect exhibitors breeding animal information for electronic submission. 
submit breeding animal nomination information by a deadline and we'll verify that the 4-H member and FFA member has completed those six hours of educational training. Uh, Co-tagging requests this year will be done differently. Uh, if, you, if your family, um, your exhibitor wants to co-tag an animal, you must send an email request to Zach Bartenslager. His email is there on the screen. Um, there is no longer a, a form to fill out for co-tagging. You just simply send to, uh, Zach an email stating um, who you are, who you want to co-tag with and the species, and then he will contact you if he has any additional questions regarding the email sent to him. Um, however, there are deadlines to request co-tagging for market cattle, that deadline is March the 4th, and for market hog, goat, and lamb, that deadline is May the 6th. Uh, co-tagging requests must be submitted for anyone outside of immediate family. Uh, so co-tagging is allowed for uh, siblings in the same family. And then if you have specific questions or um, individual uh, circumstances questions, then Zach can field those questions for you. Uh, once a co-tagging uh, request is approved or denied, that, uh, that answer is final. And if it is approved, a copy of the approved letter must be included with the state fair entry for a co-tag situation to be honored. Uh, and then just as a brief reminder, novice showmen do not need a co-tagging request or approval. As far as rules are concerned, um, we just wanna make sure that exhibitors and families refer to the ownership, possession and care rules uh, that you have access to. Animals have to be housed at the location that is verified on the validation form and animals not housed at the proper location will be unfortunately re removed from being able to show. So we just wanna make sure that everyone puts down the correct address of where the animal is located. Um, the information that we shared with you today, um, as far as the state level can be accessed at this website. Uh, the rules, the state level rules and policies are on this website as well, and you will receive um, a copy of that either at a club meeting or we will send it out as a PDF format on a remind. Please keep in mind when you're looking at this particular website that the deadlines that are listed are state level deadlines. However, Meade County exhibitors must follow our county level deadlines as we have noted them in this presentation. Dina and I asked that in order to confirm that uh, the exhibitor and an adult has viewed and understands the information for the tagging for 2022, that you fill out the survey attached to this presentation. Uh, that way we just know everyone understands all of the dates and, and is aware of all those deadlines that we have to abide by. The link will be shared with you via Remind also. And just a reminder that county tagging kits will not be dispersed to exhibitors until you have confirmed the viewing of this presentation. So please make sure you fill out this survey. Noelle and I wanna thank you for your time and we appreciate um, you making sure that you understand all of this information. Uh, you will be receiving some PDF forms via Remind and then possibly some hard copies at your next club meeting um, that will share this information as well. And as always, you can always contact one of us if you have questions and uh, you guys have our contact information. So uh, we hope that this is very clear. If not, uh, please contact us so we can answer your questions. We hope you guys have a wonderful day.